Now I want to try and solve this problem using our old kinematics approach of balancing forces. So if I simply look at the, the uh, mass on the incline, I've got tension pulling it up, I've got gravity fighting that, I've also got friction fighting that. Now how much gravity, how much friction, remember they're on an incline. So, uh, but nonetheless, the sum of all the forces at, acting on M1 is going to result in M1's acceleration. Now those forces are tension, minus gravity, minus friction. So uh, let's see how we deal with gravity. Well, my favorite little picture, we've got the weight of the thing straight down. This much gravity, with that being theta, is M1G sine theta. All right, I can deal with that. M1G sine theta. And friction is mu times the normal. And the normal force is going to be M1G cosine theta. And all of that, all those forces are what are acting on M1. And we'll get this relationship. We don't know T. We don't know A. But we have a second uh, uh, mass object in the system, and that is M2 hanging there, supported by T, yet falling due to the force of gravity, which is M2G. T is slowing it down, and the difference will tell us how M2 accelerates. Now I still have, now I have two equations in the two unknowns, uh, acceleration and tension. Frankly, I'd like to get acceleration, because again, what we're after is the change in kinetic energy of mass one, which is going to be one half m1. Final velocity of either of these um, squared. I say either of them because this, of course, is a lovely physics string. It doesn't stretch. It has no mass. The pulley has no friction. So this string simply slides over. It's, this pulley is just meant as a guide. So the tension is distributed evenly and continuously throughout. Now, if I add everything together on the left side, the, the tensions cancel out, and that's a lovely thing. I get something that might look familiar when we solve this problem using conservation of energy. On the right side, when I add them together, sure enough, uh, I could just divide, well, let's not skip too much algebra here. I've got the sum of the masses and the same acceleration. Now that acceleration will, of course, be M2. Uh, I'm going to factor out a G minus M1 sine theta. I'm even going to factor out the M1. Uh, minus, uh, minus a plus. Here we got our mu cosine. I'll go ahead and make that big bracket, big girl brackets. Divide by m1 plus m2. Now, if you remember kinematics, final velocity is uh, initial velocity squared plus 2a and the distance they go. Well, our distance is what we're calling l. So if that's a and the system starts at rest, then this should be V final squared over 2L. And when I uh, solve for VF, I'll get my 2. I'm going to do that now. So you could pause this and write it down, or you can just follow my algebra. And I'll see that I get VF squared equals to 2L times that good stuff. And if I want, it's the change in kinetic energy ultimately on M1 means the 2 will go away. And I could throw an M1 up there. And uh, frankly, now I'm done with the problem. Ta-da, on M1. So all this good stuff. Yeah, I believe everything here was given. So you should be able to solve the problem now.